From our Chicago studios, this is the Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. Assalamu alaikum, I am Samana Siddiqui. Our top story tonight, a Jewish man in Brooklyn has been arrested and charged with over 40 hate crimes against his Muslim neighbor, including attempted murder. These came after Isaac Kadosh engaged in months of vicious attacks on his Muslim neighbor, Ahmed Faisal Shabira, including hurling racial slurs against him. These culminated in Kadosh breaking into Shabira's apartment and beating him with a mallet, which caused Shabira internal bleeding. Kadosh faces charges of aggravated harassment, hate crime assault, and more. He has pleaded not guilty in King's criminal court. Kadosh's bail has been set at $25,000 cash or a $125,000 bond. He is currently being held on Rikers Island until his next court appearance tomorrow. With Israel killing 40 more Palestinians over the past 24 hours, the official death toll in Gaza has reached 40,005. The Palestinian press office reports that an additional 92,401 individuals have been injured since the war began 10 months ago. This staggering figure represents approximately 1.7 percent of Gaza's 2.3 million residents, underscoring the severe human cost of Israel's ongoing war. Among the deceased are 11,000 women and 16,300 children, with an estimated 10,000 people still missing who are presumed dead and buried under the rubble. However, in a study published last month in the British medical journal The Lancet, experts estimate that Israel has killed at least 186,000 Palestinians. Satellite imagery reveals that nearly 60 percent of Gaza's buildings have been damaged or destroyed. Amid growing international pressure, 99 rabbis have called for an urgent truce deal to provide relief and secure the return of 115 Israeli prisoners still held by Hamas. Meanwhile, over 10,000 Israeli soldiers have been injured or traumatized since Israel began its war on October 7th. The International Court of Justice has issued an order for Israel to halt its military operations in Rafah amid accusations that it is committing genocide against Palestinians in Gaza. The Biden administration has approved over $20 billion in military aid for Israel amid its ongoing war on Gaza. The comprehensive package includes up to 50 F-15IA warplanes and 25 fighter jet modernization kits, along with advanced missiles and a substantial supply of tank and mortar ammunition. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has finalized the deal, with jets expected to be delivered by 2025. The aid, which is crucial for Israel's defense capabilities, comes despite rising congressional opposition and growing concerns over the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. The State Department insists that this support aligns with U.S. national interests and Israel's security needs. Bangladesh's former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, alongside eight former cabinet members and police officers, is facing charges of crimes against humanity and genocide. The case was lodged at the International Crimes Tribunal in the capital, Dhaka, which was established in 2010. Sheikh Hasina used this controversial tribunal to execute by hanging several opposition leaders. The charges followed the death of ninth grader Alif Ahmed Siam, who was fatally shot by police during student protests in August. The tribunal, seeking international cooperation, has been advised that no one, including Hasina, will be spared from prosecution. This legal action adds to existing cases against the former prime minister, who fled to India on August 5th. Afghanistan's Taliban celebrated the third anniversary of their return to power with a military parade. It was held in Kandahar, located in southern Afghanistan, which holds symbolic significance for the Taliban as the birthplace of the movement. In Afghanistan's capital, Kabul, helicopters and fighter aircraft flew over the Bagram Air Base, approximately 24 miles north of the capital. In a message to the nation, interim Prime Minister Mullah Muhammad Hassan Akhun said that the responsibility of what he called the Islamic Emirate towards Afghans has not ended and that efforts must continue to sustain the regime and ensure stability in the country. The Taliban returned to power in Kabul in August 2021, following the pullout of U.S.-led forces after two decades of war. On the eve of India's 78th Independence Day today, an army officer was killed in a military operation against suspected militants in Jammu and Kashmir. Officials said Captain Deepak Singh was killed during a military operation in the Doda district of the disputed region. The Indian Army had said a military operation was going on in Doda since Tuesday, in which a U.S.-based M4 assault rifle and three blood-soaked rucksacks containing equipment and logistics were recovered. Indian Defense Minister Rajnath Singh on Wednesday chaired a high-level security meeting to assess the situation in Jammu and Kashmir. Last Saturday, two Indian soldiers and one civilian were killed in a South Kashmir encounter. Pakistanis mark 78th Independence Day. Details after the break, so stay tuned and we'll be right back.
Pakistanis gathered at the National Mausoleum in Karachi on Wednesday for the country's 78th Independence Day celebrations to honor the memory of Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the nation's founder. Following a national flag hoisting ceremony and military band performance, the participants laid a wreath at the final resting place of Jinnah and offered their prayers. The celebrations also featured a musical performance by a band of children. Pakistan was established on August 14, 1947, after the Indian subcontinent, formerly under the control of the British Empire, was formally divided into two new dominions of India and Pakistan. London Mayor Sadiq Khan has announced enhanced security training for mosques across the city in response to recent far-right racist violence targeting minority communities. The new initiative aims to bolster safety and combat hate crimes following disturbing incidents that have heightened fears among London's immigrant, Muslim and non-white residents. Khan emphasized London's unity against racism and Islamophobia, stating we must ensure that all Londoners feel safe in their communities. The city is working with the metropolitan police and community leaders to protect places of worship and support faith groups. The government has also reopened its mosque security plan, complementing the existing approximately $37 million per protective security for mosques scheme. The first training session was conducted on Wednesday by the group Faith Associates at the Al-Manar Muslim Cultural Heritage Center. It offered practical advice on safeguarding mosques and addressing hate crimes, with Metropolitan Police representatives providing additional expertise. A protest on Los Angeles' 405 freeway on Tuesday morning caused severe traffic jams during rush hour. Demonstrators called for a ceasefire in Gaza and an end to Israel's war on Palestinians, urging the U.S. to end its military support for Israel. The California Highway Patrol removed approximately 50 protesters from the roadway and arrested nine people. The freeway was reopened after the demonstrators were removed. No injuries were reported. Observers say the disruption highlights ongoing tensions over U.S. foreign policy and its long-standing support of Israel, particularly since it began its war on Gaza, which has killed over 40,000 Palestinians. Algerian Olympic boxer Iman Khalif is suing social media platform X over allegations of cyberbullying. Khalif's recent fight, where Italian boxer Algela Carini quit after just 46 seconds, sparked a storm of online abuse. She was falsely accused of being a trans woman and, in some cases, even a man competing against biological women. Notably, J.K. Rowling, author of the best-selling Harry Potter series, and Elon Musk are facing accusations. Rowling, who has more than 14 million followers on X, described the boxing match as a male punching a female. In his post, ex-owner Musk tweeted, men don't belong in women's sports. Khalif, who recently triumphed over China's Yang Lu, asserts her right to compete. She said, I'm a woman like any other woman. Columbia University President Minush Shafiq has announced her resignation effective immediately. Her tenure, which she reserved for over a year, marks the shortest in Colombia's history. It was marked by heated disputes over her handling of campus demonstrations and perceived anti-Semitism amid campus opposition to Israel's war on Gaza. Shafiq faced strong criticism from student groups, particularly the Columbia chapter of Jewish Voice for Peace. The group accused her of violent repression against Free Palestine protests. Shafiq was also criticized for authorizing police sweeps that led to more than 200 arrests. The Students for Justice in Palestine group has warned that future presidents must heed student demands or face similar backlash. Shafiq cited the need for new leadership to address upcoming challenges as her reason for stepping down. That's all from our Chicago studios tonight. Thank you for tuning in. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for the latest updates. Your support is needed now more than ever to continue our mission of providing informative, educational, and inspiring content to Muslims in North America and around the world. Donate now by visiting muslimnetwork.tv slash donate. For more content, keep watching Muslim Network TV or visit muslimnetwork.tv. Salam and good night.